That was a little sidebar. I just said uh, the Nasta link to Timoth in, in Amharic. Um, she didn't realize that I was born in Ethiopia. I speak fluent Amharic. I can still scare the hell out of cab drivers in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. Um, it's my great pleasure to summarize this conference. It's also a great challenge. I was just thinking, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be nice if there were an AI application that would give after-dinner speeches and summarize conferences for you? Um, I, I want to just say that when we conceived of presence many years ago, well, not that many years ago, just two years ago, our, our thought was that in a great institution like Stanford with seven different schools on one campus, not across the freeway, not across the state, but right here, uh, what a great opportunity to do interdisciplinary work and try and change something in the living laboratories of the hospital and the clinic. And in a way, this conference and all of you who are attending the speakers are, are metaphors for just that. It's really a very diverse and uh, wonderful group. Uh, I want to thank uh, Treen and the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. What a wonderful vision. Uh, foundations like the Robert Wood Johnson, the Moore Foundation, that allow us to engage in these kinds of uh, exercises of reflection and inquiry and intentionality, all those wonderful things. But Treen, especially your thoughtfulness in helping us come up with the, um, the right speakers, the right themes, uh, was extraordinary. So we very, very grateful for that. Thank you. I want to thank all my colleagues. I don't want to bore you at length with a, a long recitation of names. I'll just say the extraordinary speakers, uh, the folks who made uh, your, your arrival here seamless, uh, Sonu and her incredible crew. Uh, this could not happen without uh, their hard work over many, many months. Um, I'm reminded of uh, C.P. Snow's famous two cultures argument, if you remember that from many, many years ago. C.P. Snow was a physicist, and um, you know he was lamenting the fact that all the people in power tended to be classically trained humanists, and they were contemptuous of scientists who didn't know Shakespeare and you know couldn't quote Milton. And yet, uh, if you ask them about the second law of thermodynamics or something in science, they didn't feel that they needed the same literacy. And C.P. Snow's argument was that these two cultures uh, needed much more commonality, much more dialogue. And I think it's very gratifying for me to think that if indeed we have two cultures of computer science, AI, and medicine, um, I actually think we have many cultures. We have many, many different cultures. But it's so important that those two cultures talk. And I, I think I sense today a tremendous dialogue taking place uh, between the two cultures. I won't try and summarize everything that took place today. Uh, I think you're as uh, anxious to digest what you heard. And also, I don't want to be the barrier between the freeway or the, uh, or the liquor bar outside. Uh, either way, I don't want to be the barrier. I'll just say that um, some of the themes that emerged for me uh, was, the, was the striking contrast between our, our ability to have a conference like this, the richness of Stanford and this community, and what we know is poverty just outside our doorstep. And I think that theme came up again and again. And uh, David Gruski and his wonderful panel uh, with Emma and Jeff really set the stage for us on that. Um, I want to thank Jonathan Chen even before that but for giving us the vocabulary about all these things. Uh, Victor, thanks for coming all the way. You and Mark really helped us understand the perspective of population science, health equity. And um, um, I, I was really, I learned a tremendous amount from uh, Margaret and uh, from Virginia Eubanks and Nirav and the public health panel on the, the business of the, the moral equity and the moral social structures that we have to deal with if we're going to do anything meaningful in this area. Um, but there was a great up, note of optimism that I took away. I especially uh, liked um, Sanjay Basu's uh, charge that we need to use AI to leverage diversity and personalization. Uh, I liked his idea that we shouldn't just rely on the EMR, but in fact should be stratifying results from many different sources to get the kind of uh, guidance that we need. Nigam is uh, 
a wonderful uh, articulator of how AI and machine learning needs to be specific if it's going to be useful in the clinic. His question uh, earlier today resonated for so many of us that I actually went back to him and I said, Nigam, please tell me the question you asked one more time so I can restate it accurately because I think it's at the heart of what we're taking away. He said, we need data to build a learning healthcare system. However, we don't trust anyone enough to give them our data. The solution has to be a public-private partnership to create a trustable institution and a right to benefit from the data and, and, and the models if you're a contributor to the data. Consent would be for the scope of service, not for the actual data. Um, I was quite taken by the afternoon panel with, with uh, Roberta Chering and with, with Tino Cuellar uh, and, uh, and uh, Professor Cohen from, from, from the East Coast and our own John Ioannidis, making us question our own very existence as being valid. Um, clearly, we have huge ethical problems, legal problems to wrestle with. But here's the thing. For all the problems you heard about today, um, we have the right people in the room here. We have the right people who are at the right institution. We have great funding agencies. So if anybody can get to the heart of this, uh, I believe it's meetings like this, convening people like this, that can begin to articulate the problems and begin to solve them. I'd like to challenge all of you, especially our panelists, uh, to consider an action that emanates from this, and this was a suggestion uh, from Nirav Shah, something that comes out of this. So especially if you found yourself seated at the table uh, with a person from another discipline, uh, I would really love to see a paper come out across those disciplines. Um, finally, I can't help but comment on the fact that I've been at Stanford for 10 years. I've never seen an all-women's panel before. Uh, you know, not, and this was just a, a milestone. Thank you, Tina. Not to mention the excellence of, uh, of, their, of their statements. So I'm leaving here terribly optimistic. I hope that as we go forward, we can all keep in mind who this is for. I mean, ultimately, at least for those of us in healthcare, and that remained the larger theme here, this is all for the individual uh, who is ill, who is seeking health care, and trying to make their experience better. And you can't close with a better quote than the famous one that guides us in medicine, which is, the secret to the care of the patient is in caring for the patient. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you for being so attentive. Thank our wonderful speakers. And please join us outside for uh, a reception, uh, and we'll talk more out there. Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.